Hello friends, this is Faith and today I'll be showing you how to make this crochet patchwork cardigan. I really love how it came out and I really love the colors. And in this video I make it in a size medium to large with a back width of 28 inches. So if you want a smaller one or a larger one, you can find the free written pattern on my blog which is linked in the description box below so you can refer to it for other sizes. So for this project I'll be using a worsted weight yarn and a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors, tape measure and darning needle. So to begin you're going to I'm going to use eight colors. You can use any colors of your choice and I'm going to make 45 squares. So I'm going to have six of purple, six of green, six of white, six of red, six of orange and then five yellow, five pink and five blue. Then I'll use black for the front ribbing and the bottom ribbing. So this is going to be the layout of the colors and I'm going to leave this in the written pattern which will be free on my blog. So you'll, you'll see how to arrange the colors on the sleeves, on the back panel, front panel, both front and right and the left and then sleeves also. I'll show you how to arrange the colors on the right sleeve and the left sleeve. So to begin I'm going to make a slip knot. And then I'm working a size medium and large, so I'm going to chain 25 for a single or an individual patch. So go ahead, chain 25, then we'll proceed to row 1. With 25 chains on your hook, you're going to yarn over for row 1. Skip the very first chain and on this second chain you want to insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through you'll have three loops and over pull through the three loops. So that's our first half double crochet and you're going to work half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end of the row. At the end of row one you should have 24 half double crochet stitches then you're going to chain one and turn your work and for this row two you're going to yarn over go through both loops of the first stitch and work a half double crochet then you're going to have double crochet back loop only for each stitch until you reach the very last stitch so yarn over go in the back loop only and work a half double crochet After working all the way to the very last stitch, instead of working in the back loop only for this last stitch, you're going to work through both the top loops. So yarn over, go through both loops and make your last half double crochet. Then chain one and turn. Repeat row two pattern, work a half double crochet in the very first stitch. Then half double crochet back loop only each stitch until you until you reach the very last stitch. At the very end of the row you have one stitch remaining here, yarn over, go through both loops and make your last half double crochet stitch. Then chain one and turn. So you're going to repeat this row three pattern until you have a total of 14 rows for one square. And then I'll meet you at the end. After working 14 rows, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So chain one and cut the yarn. Then you're going to repeat this until you have a total of 45 patches. And then when you're through, you're going to weave in all the ends before joining the panels together. So work your 45 squares, weave in all the ends and then I'll meet you when you're now joining the squares together. So I went ahead and weaved in all my ends. I have this one here because I'm going to use it to attach these two squares together. So you're going to lay them on how you want them to be. This is going to be a sleeve panel and you're going to do this for both sleeve panels, the front panels and the back panel. And then you're going to start by attaching the vertical squares. So you're going to take two patches like this 
and then use this if you don't have an end you're going to attach a new yarn and then whip stitch these two sides together so you also want to do this on the wrong side so our work ended on the right side so you turn your squares to the wrong side and then whip stitch them together go through both stitches on each side then pull through go back in the same fast stitches just to secure the first stitch then go in the next stitches So you're going to repeat this all the way to the end and then when you reach the end you're going to weave your tail inside this color that is the same as the one you're using to join the two panels. Then when you're through you're going to take the next color. So I had red, white and blue. So I'm going to take blue and then join these two seams together on the wrong side. So when you're through with joining two patches you're going to take the third one and since we didn't have any end that we're going to use to attach the two together, we're going to take a new yarn and then you're going to weave it through this one before we join the two panels together. So go and weave it inside to secure the end. Then that's when you can now attach the two pieces together. So go through both loops at the first stitch on this side, then go to the first stitch on the opposite side, insert your yarn, pull through, and go back in the same stitches to secure that first stitch. Then you want to continue with whip stitches on every stitch to the end of this side seam, to the end of this seam. So when you reach the end of that seam, you're going to go back in a few stitches and then you're going to use this color and weave it inside the part with the same color. When you're done, just go ahead and cut your yarn. So our first panel of three patches is done. You're going to repeat the same pattern and finish these middle patches and then finish these side patches and then when you're through, we'll join now the vertical rows together. When you're done joining the individual patches together, you're going to work now on this vertical line. So this is the right side facing. So I'm going to take two right side facing each other and then seam them on the wrong side. So you want to cut your yarn that is two and a half of the length that you're going to seam. Then fit it in the turning needle. And then I'm going to do a few stitches here before joining the two sides together. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll meet you when I'm now joining this line together. To join the two or the vertical line now, you're going to join them on the row stitches. You're going to go in the first row of this one, then the first row of the other one and pull your yarn through. Go back in the same stitch. And 
and then you want to whip stitch it also on this side all the way until you reach the end. When you reach the end of your first two patches, you're going to go right on the next two patches and continue with your whip stitch. So just repeat that all the way to the end. And when you turn it on the right side, it's going to have a little, it's going to be seen, but it's not going to be so conspicuous. So that's a small price to pay for the patches. After working your stitches all the way to the end of that seam, you can go back and some few stitches. So our two panels are complete and then you're going to go ahead and join this other seam so you'll have three, three squares across and three squares vertically for the sleeves. Do this for the other sleeve panel and then you're going to have only two, two times three for the front panels. And then for the back panels you're going to have five patches across and then three vertically. So I'm going to leave your photo here. You're going to see how I joined all the squares together. Then when you're through, we'll meet when you're now joining the front panels to the back panels and then attaching the sleeves. After joining all the squares together, now we have the back panel with five patches across and three patches lengthwise. We're going to take the back panel the right side facing you while the wrong side facing outward while the front panel is going to be the right side also facing down and the wrong side facing you. So this is how we're going to place them. The wrong sides should be outside and the right sides should face, should face each other. And then at this point you're going to take your yarn and your needle, whip stitch it all the, the way to the end here and then go back in some few stitches, weave it in and do the same for this other side. When you throw with the shoulder seam, we're going to attach the sleeve to our main body. So take the sleeve panel and then mark the middle stitch. Remember we had 24 stitches for every patchwork. So you're going to take the 12th stitch of this middle patch and then connect it to the shoulder seam and then lay it flat so this is also the wrong side facing you both sides and then you're going to start by seaming it from where this end reaches so mine is the the sixth row of this square the second square from the shoulder so that's we're going to attach it and then with our darning needle we're going to just work your whip stitches all the way to the shoulder and then all the way to this other side. So I'll go ahead and do the whip stitches all the way and then I'll meet you when I'm now joining the cardigan side seams together. After attaching the sleeve to the cardigan, you're going to fold it at the shoulder seam. Still working on the wrong side. And then you're going to sew all the way from here to end of the sleeves. So 
So go ahead and do that seaming using a whip stitch and then we'll turn to the right side of the cardigan and work on the bottom ribbing and the neck ribbing. When you're done with all the seams you're going to turn your work on the right side. So this is how it looks like on the right side. So to work on the bottom row we're going to attach our yarn here for the ribbing. So working on the right side attach your color for the bottom ribbing. Chain one to secure it. And then chain nine. So you have nine chains for the bottom ribbing. You're going to skip the very first chain and on this second chain, you're going to work a slip stitch. So insert your hook at the back bump then yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Go in the next and do the same until you have nine slip stitches. So when you have your eight slip stitches, sorry, not nine, eight slip stitches. When you have the eight slip stitches, you're going to slip stitch on the next two stitches here at the bottom row. Then turn your work and go work slip stitches back loop only on these eight slip stitches. So go in the first slip stitch, work a slip stitch back loop only. So in reach the last one here you're going to go through both loops. So work a slip stitch through both the loops. Then chain one and turn to row three. For row three we're going to work slip stitch back loop only all the eight stitches. When you have your eight slip stitches, you're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches here at the bottom row. So one, two, then turn and repeat row two by working slip stitches on each of the eight stitches. Sorry, on the seven stitches, when you reach the eighth one, you're going to go through both loops. So slip stitch back loop only in the first seven stitches. When you read the last stitch, you're going to go through both loops and work a slip stitch. Chain one, turn, and repeat row three and row four all the way until you finish the bottom ribbing. So we'll meet when you're working the neck ribbing and the sleeve cuffs. When you're through with the bottom ribbing, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn and then turn on this side for the neck band. So you're going to take your yarn and then make a slip knot and for the first row of our neck band we're going to work single rows, single crochet all around. So insert your hook on the very first stitch here at the bottom ribbing, yarn over pull through, then make a standing single crochet. So yarn over pull through two loops. And then work one single crochet in each of the eight slip stitches. So that is two and continue until you have eight. So 
So in your three with the eight single crochets on the bottom ribbing, you're going to start on the first half double crochet stitch here. So place one single crochet around that half double crochet stitch and two around the next. One around the next and two around the next. So repeat this all the way until you're through with the with one side. When you reach the end of this side, you're going to work one single one single crochet on each of these back stitches. Remember there are 24, and then turn to this other side. Place one single crochet around the first half double crochet stitch, two single crochet around the next, all the way until you reach the end of this other row. Then work your last single crochets on the last eight slip stitches. Then when you're done, we'll meet in row two. When you're through with row one, you're going to identify where you want to place the button holes. And then with your stitch marker, you can now mark those stitches. So my buttons will be this other side and then this will be the buttonhole. So we're going to change our hook to a 4mm and then start on our second row. So for the second row you're going to chain 9 and then turn your work. For row 1 you're going to work on the back bumps. So skip the first chain on the second chain insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So that's our first single crochet. And you're going to continue until you have single crochet in each of the chains. So I have 8 chains, then I'm going to slip stitch in the next 2 stitches of our row 1, skip the very first stitch, slip stitch in the second and the third stitch, turn, and we're going to work on these single crochet stitches. So working on the back loop only, you're going to go in the first stitch and work a single crochet back loop. Then continue with single crochet back loop only until you reach the last stitch. When you reach the last stitch, go through both loops and then work your last single crochet. Then chain one, turn to row three. Row three, we're going to work single crochet back loop only each of those eight stitches. Then slip stitch the next two stitches. Turn. Row 4, we're going to repeat our row 2 pattern. So single crochet back loop only on these 8 stitches. When you reach the very last stitch, you're going to go through both loops. Chain one, turn. Row five, you're going to repeat row three pattern, single crochet back loop only on those eight stitches. Then slip stitch the next two stitches. 
So you're going to repeat row 2 and row 3 pattern until you reach our first marker. Then I'll show you how to create that space for the button. And then you can do that for the next two button holes. So I went ahead with my row repeat and I have two stitches to our marker. So after working this row 3 pattern repeat, I'm going to go in the next stitch and work a slip stitch. Then slip stitch in that stitch with marker. Then turn my work. And for this row, we're going to work the button hole. So single crochet back loop only the first two stitches. And then you're going to chain four. Skip four stitches and single crochet back loop only the last two stitches. So at this point you can try and fit in and see if your button will pass through that space that you've just created and if it passes through perfectly you can continue with your rows so chain one turn single crochet back loop only the first two stitches then single crochet in the four chains placing one single crochet in each chain single crochet back loop only the last two stitches at this point you can remove your marker and then continue with your pattern so slip stitch the next two stitches turn slip stitch back single crochet back loop only the first seven stitches single crochet the last stitch then turn and repeat that row repeat until you reach the next marker do the same for the next marker and the third if you're working with three button holes then continue with the repeat pattern all the way until you reach the opposite side and then chain one cut your yarn so go ahead and then i'll meet you when you're through with your neck band ribbing after working all the way to this other end you're just going to chain one and cut your yarn then use your dunning needle and weave in this tail inside of your cardigan so the next step will be to fix our buttons. So to fix the buttons, I'm sorry this yarn is dark, you can't see, but you're going to lay it on top of your on top of the side with the button holes, and then you're going to mark that the stitch that is in line with the button hole, that row. And then once it's, that is done, you can take your button with the turning needle and weave it at that point. So you're going to insert your yarn from behind and then just weave it or just sew it on side the cardigan. Once that is done, you can go ahead and weave in your ends inside your work. So do that for the next button holes. And then when you're through, we'll work the cuffs. To add the cuff, you're going to pick the stitch that is closest to this seam that goes directly to the underarm. And then with a 4.0 millimeter hook and your yarn, you're going to start with a standing single crochet. So make a slip knot and then you want to go in those stitches, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, then go in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through all the three loops. And then you're going to add three single crochets together. So you want to insert your hook in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, go in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. When you have four loops, you're going to yarn over, pull through all the four loops. Then single crochet two together, go in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. When you have three loops, yarn over, pull through all the three loops. So you're going to alternate between three single crochet together and two single crochet together.
So alternate between those stitches all the way until you're, you've finished your row. If you have four stitches remaining here, you're going to work two single crochet together, then two single crochet together, then join with a slip stitch to our first stitch. When reach the end of row one or round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch to our first standing single crochet two together. Then you're going to chain one and work single crochet on every stitch on this round. So go in the first stitch and work a single crochet. Then you want to single crochet in each stitch all the way until the end of the round. When you're done with that round, you're going to join with a slip stitch or first single crochet stitch and then start now the ribbing. So for the ribbing, you're going to chain six. And then work on the busy back bumps all the way, placing one single crochet, skip the first one, and single crochet in the second one, then in each chain until the end. You should have five single crochet stitches, then skip the very first stitch here on our round two, then slip stitch in the next two stitches. Turn and for row two, we're going to start by working single crochet back loop only on the first four stitches. single crochet in the very last stitch going through both loops. Chain one, turn, single crochet back loop only each of the five stitches. Slip stitch the next two stitches. Turn, repeat row 2 and row 3 all the way until you're through with your rounds. When you reach the last row, after working your last row of the single crochet back loop only, you're going to chain 1, then cut your yarn, leaving a tail for weaving or joining the two sides together. So take your darning needle. Then you're going to turn your work on the wrong side or work on the inside. So go through the front loop on this side and the back loop on this other side. Then go ahead and do the same all the way until the end. When it's all sewn up, you can go ahead and hide your tail or weave your tail inside your cuff. So that's all for today's tutorial. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, stay safe, God bless you and bye.